was a bite guys Hello makeshifters, this is what we're making today. I was inspired to make this by looking at a lure called Morris Mouse. It have big head, bulky body and a tail. So I wanted to make something along the lines, which isn't an exact copy, I guess it's my interpretation, but the concept is nearly the same. Let's make it. What we're gonna start with? is this 1.2 mil in diameter wire. It's 18 centimeters long. And first we have to bend it. We will bend it exactly in the middle first. And then let's bend it outwards. Let's make it straight. To bend the loops I will measure on the calipers 3.5 centimeters from this part here and then I will make a scratch there. This is what we have. Now we just have to snip it. Now we need to file sharp sharp edges. Okay guys, it's all filed down. So now we can close it completely. Here we go guys, it's pretty closed. You see, the two hooks are catching on to each other. So let's say if we get a fish, the fish will pull. It's not going to open our little, little wire frame. It, it is tracking this way a bit, if I can straighten it. I just need to straighten the loops. Okay guys, I got our little wire frame in the vise. I'm going to use my bigger bobbing and I'm going to use a red sewing thread. And the material that we're going to use for the body is going to be this, this dust brush. I'm going to divide this section into two segments. I have four colors on the on the dust brush. So two colors gonna go here, red and yellow, and then green and blue gonna go at the front. I got about eight strands of, fl of flash. I'm going to come in underneath, fold them over and tie them down. And then on the way back, I'm going to try to do touching turns. 
to tie everything down and make it uniform. To protect this area, since it's going to be a pike fly, we are going to apply some hot glue. This is your standard hot glue gun that uses your standard hot glue sticks. With the flame of the candle, let's let's smooth it out. Okay, the glue is dry. Let's continue tying. Okay, now we'll just wait for it to cool down. Bring the tread back to about halfway. Okay guys, I have chosen to go with this 10 mil eyes. I think they will go just nicely at the front of this lure. Let's get the glue a little bit hot again and then we can apply them. Now guys, we're left with a little gap here, and then here, we're going to apply more hot glue there. Let's smooth it out with the flame. Okay, I can see the glue becoming 
less transparent so it's hardening that's the front part done glue have hardened now the eyes are really secure in there ready for the next step okay the front part of the lure is finished now we need to come up with the tail this is a sponge fish that we made in one of the episodes and this kind of a tail will be quite suitable for this lure just at the end I don't want to have the yarn I want the tail to vibrate so what I come up with I'm going to use this button it's your normal button that you button up your jacket or your trousers with and I'm going to attach it at the end and see if it vibrates I've cut this knife apart that's the handle and this is what we're going to use to trace the sponge material with this is your normal sponge this is a big one used to wash cars this is your clamp your knife handle and that's the scalpel and I'm just going to trace it around This is what we have, and there's four sharp edges now, we need to round them off. Now we round it off at the front. And now round off the tail. I got a needle, this is braided line, and at the end of it I have a button. We're going to start from the tail towards the head, straight through the middle. We run it through the sponge fish, we don't have the button tight to the tail, we have it a bit out, so it has room to wiggle. The hook I have on the vise, it's Gamakatsu, warm, 3 to 3, in 7 knot. Still going to use the same sewing thread in red, using different bobbin this time with a stainless steel tube. If you want to know how to make all these bobbins and whip finishers, I leave the link in the description. I'm going to take the braid, put it through the eye of the hook, and tie it down. This way, nothing will pull out. We were whip finishing away from the hukai, now we'll whip finish towards the hukai. And this thread is cotton, so I, after I fish it one time and it gets wet and dries, it's going to tighten, creating a really strong whip finish. And I have a double whip finish there, so I'm not worried and I'm not even going to varnish it. Because this sponge material I think it's the weakest link here. The sponge will rip before this whip finish will get wrecked. Now we need to put the hook through the sponge material. What I will do is, I just see where the where the band is, and I'm going to pinch it there. Then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees to the hook. 
and I do a straight poke through. Now it looks no different to them silicone lures that you put on an offset hook. And when the fish bites, sponge material is soft, it's going to bend it and get hooked. Let's give it some color. Black top. Now we will give it some red eyes. There's no point in doing eyes as the front part of this sponge fish will not be visible, will be covered by the fibers of the main body of the lure. But just in case if we want to take this hook off and use it as a jig, then we can and then the lure is complete with eyes. Now some green stripes on the side. Let's attach the tail and the hook to the lure. For the tail we would need two of the split rings and then for the front hook we need one. And let me show you how to attach split ring and a tail all together. We're gonna get a split ring, open it, put, put another split ring in there. There's a little gap. Here we go. So now we just need to twist it. And now in one motion, the split ring and the hook attach to each other. Here we go. Lures are ready. Let's check size and weight. All together, it's pushing 22 and a half, 23 centimeters. It is weighing 15.4 grams. That is dry. When a sponge fish will be full of water and the material will absorb water in it. Altogether it might be weighing 20-25 grams. It's time for a water test. Uh oh, <laughs> she doesn't sink. Let's put them in the box and take them out fishing. I believe the lure is too big. I don't have a compartment where I can put this lure without bending it too much. It's gonna have to go into the storage box. Okay guys, we are out on the water again on a big river. The water looks different. The river is much higher today than, than what it was before when I was here. And we're gonna be trying our new sponge mouse lure. Whoa, I love the action guys. Look at that. Love the action on it.
was a bite guys <laughs> oh finally I don't know if you saw it guys, it probably wasn't visible on camera, but something big was going after the spongy mouse lure and it wasn't a pike, it was not a pike guys, uh, I don't know, what, it could have been a big trout or a salmon. I tell you what guys, it's incidents and occurrences like that that makes you want to come back fishing every time and make more and more new lures to improve let's try the sponge fish Okay hey guys, last attempt to get something, 30 gram floating jig, let's see what we can do. Look at that guys, the moon is out. I'm no expert, but it looks like it's a full moon. Maybe that's why the fish is not biting. <laughs> Although I did get a bite of a pike and a fall off a, of a tr big trout or a salmon. Last cast and then, and then home time. It was another blank day today, but it wasn't as bad as the previous outing. At least I got a bite and a fall off a big fish that seemed like a trout or a salmon. It was pretty good. And the main thing, I've tested the lure. It was working just how I expected and even better. I expected the tail to kick, but I didn't even think that when you twitch it and jerk it, that it will dart and then go to the side and then dart again and go to the side. So pretty cool. I'm gonna go home, take some rest and think for a new lure for a box.